Oh, I wouldn't play in there, kitty, if I were you. Oh, my poor tote. I had such plans for you. Your brother and sister are upset, too. So am I. Oh, well, we'll get more into that later. Hi, everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California, and I decided to take my camera and walk around and do a morning vlog. Isn't this gorgeous? I have to tie this up. Not sure if I'm going to use yarn or... You know what? I will use yarn because I want to be gentle with it. I could use masking tape. I still use masking tape, but the yarn has been holding fantastic. It's cheap. It holds all year. Let me tell you something. It goes through the winter and everything. Oh, you know, you know, so I never brought this up. I wonder if people do. If you don't have cutters and you want to take off these old leaves, let me show you. Don't rip. What you do, this is a tomato leaf, is you, you bend down. Oh, watch this carefully. And you'll hear it sometimes snap and then bend up and then bend down. And it will should snap off. It wasn't quite ready to come off. But you don't want to rip. If you pull a leaf and it's still attached, then you'll rip the bottom. And when you rip the, it open too much on tomatoes, you can get something in there that the tomato plant doesn't like. See, the brown ones will come right off. But let's see if there's another one. No, actually, the plant looks pretty good. So that's how I do it, like this one. Let's say, well, that one, let's say this one. See, this one's more yellow. Let's get the brown one out. I throw the leaves back in. Now, this is awful stiff. I don't know if it'll work on that, but what you do is you bend down, see? And then it breaks, and then lift it directly back up. And by lifting it up, you do not damage the stock at all, and you can do a quick pruning. I don't know if anybody else does it, but that's the way I do it. So remember, bend down, it should snap, bend up, and the rest will come off, and you don't damage the trunk of the plant. Uh, let's go over a couple things that people have asked that I remember in my head. First of all, let me tell you, this is the, my favorite way to do a video, to pick up a camera without any thoughts and just go for it. This is my favorite way, and then upload it, so you get it right away, usually within hours or the next day. A couple of you have said, oh my gosh, my tomato plant is dying. All the bottom leaves are turning yellow. They do turn yellow. That's the way they are. As it grows up, it opens up. And you want it open under your tomato plant. You want the airflow. If you don't get the airflow, then you can end up with, eh, it might get spider mite and stuff because it might get too damp in there or something. So you want the airflow. A lot of times, some people trim all these leaves off just to make sure, see, up, down, just to make sure you get a lot of airflow in there. So don't worry about the bottom leaves. I worry more if something's going on on the top. The top is all the new growth. The top is gonna to be giving you the fruit as the plant grows. Later on, depending on where you are, for me, this tomato plant may die completely back. And you may look at it and think, oh, the plant is dead, but then all of a sudden the trunk of the plant starts throwing out new growth later on. So it depends on where you are. Like I said, here our tomatoes can grow all year round and grow right into next spring. It will depend on the weather. Let's go and look at my catastrophe down here where the squirrels have taken all my beautiful squash. Not since I've told it, but I didn't do a good job tooling. I just kind of quickly threw it on within minutes, but they chewed the center out of some of the plants and they're trying to make a comeback, but no biggie. I've already started new squash and I'll tell you, I planted gray squash down here, and I think there's a couple left here I didn't pick among this stuff. And I, I really like the black beauty zucchini better. I also I might be planting some yellow zucchini. See, there's a gray squash. And you're going, it's not gray. Yeah, you know when the gray squash ripens, see the stem is gone? They turn yellow. Even your zucchini will do that. We've got something here. Okay, that's the gray squash. And see, the ants are pollinating. That's okay. What you don't want with ants is for them to build a nest in there. When they build a nest, then they redirect the water. And that's when you have a problem. Now, see, I've got a tomato plant. Oh, this tomato plant's going to be loaded. I haven't walked down here and looked for a couple days. Well, I walk, but I water and keep walking. Isn't that gorgeous? See, the tomato plant is independent. Gary watered that, so he watered real hard there and he kind of separated the soil, but if I water here, I'll push it back and that's perfectly fine, no big deal. But see how, what I'm actually pointing out, see how the squash has got its own 
bedroom. <laughs> and then this one's got its own smaller room. It's got a pot. So though there is holes on the bottom and they can send their roots, they're still independent to a point. And if I quickly walk through here, I gotta have a label. Oh, gray squash. Yeah. I love my labels for my tote lids. That's just letting me know this is a gray squash. If I wanted to, I could just hit that with water. And then the squash will get water from the bottom of that pot. The other thing too is, I don't know if I can lift it now because there might be roots, so I'm not going to try because my main thing is to keep this going for the whole winter. So I'll have tomatoes up against the wall nice and warm. But the point is it will always be wet underneath so it can always send its roots under there. But see, even this one that got chewed up really bad has made a comeback. So that's really cool. I've got a yellow squash in there. I want to get that off and compost that because that one is not going to do anything. You can take that one off. I don't think that one's going to do anything either. I might leave that one. What am I going to do with the squash? Compost it. How am I going to compost that? I could push it in with my hands and I'll be dealing with all the soil under. There we go. <laughs> compost in place. I've got to sit down and do seed stuff someday. I, I, I love when I watch videos. You must grow baby seeds in seed starter only because the soil is too rich. I love when I read and hear a lot of these things. It's so funny. The soil is too rich. The potting soil that's made up from forest matter, read the label, is too rich. Yes, I know. Let's walk over here. That they add in some plant food sometimes. Too rich. You know how I've been growing for years. I literally will take kitchen scraps, like this one's brand new, and just dump it in there. Like it's up. Ah. Well, here we go. Here we go. I, honest, honest to goodness, I had no idea. Kitchen scraps dumped in here. I haven't even put any soil. Now, you don't think all the kitchen scraps and the squash that was rotten and all that isn't rich? That's the funniest thing. You're going to think she staged it. I don't stage anything. I, like I said, I, Gary watered this for me. I'll, I'll tell you what's going on. I refused to come out here the other day. My neighbors got three great big Great Danes who have been persistent to leap the fence and come into my yard. Well, we haven't spoken to him, but I did talk to the son. And they knocked over stuff in the bathtub. They're monsters. They look like horses when they come through here. They ran after me. They growled at Gary. And I told Gary, I'm not coming to work on the chair garden until he gets those dogs behind the fence because I don't know them. And, I, and besides, I can't bring Kitty out here. The gosh knows what they would do to her. So he's been coming out here and watering the plants for me. Now, I haven't seen him for a couple days, so maybe they got the message because I did talk to the son to let him know. They knocked down a runner. They went after some lady with a stroller. There were things going on, and people were terrified, and they were coming to me. Whose dogs are those? And I said, I just said, I don't know. It's somebody up the hill. So I haven't been coming out here, but I didn't see him yesterday, so maybe they got the message that they can't let their dogs run free because that's what they're doing. They're letting their dogs run free and they just love running on the hillsides, going up the hill and then just stampeding through here like a herd. And let me tell you something, they're big. And even if they accidentally knocked me down, like they did a runner, who knows what would happen? So I haven't come out here. So going back to this, forget about the dogs. Hopefully I don't hear them, so that's a good thing. But that's kitchen scraps, which is so rich. It's got microbes in there, and I'm sure, I don't know, I just set this up. So I'm not even sure if there's earthworms in here. I started throwing, look how it's already breaking down. Just start piling leaves and stuff in here. I don't, I don't want all this. I may let the squash grow. I don't know what's in here, so I'm not gonna dig it apart. I'm gonna pick the best squash and, I guess I'm going to leave it right now, but I was planning on planting a zucchini in here, but I'll pick out one or two of the best plants and then I'll move the other ones. Maybe I'll move them around the totes. But that's what I'm saying. How can anyone say the potting soil is too rich when it's growing in rotting matter? Rotting matter that's full of microbes. It's not too rich. So I, I'm going to just let you know, you do what you want, but I have always been buying plain old potting soil. 
I buy the cheapest, what I can afford at the time, and usually it's the cheapest. And if it's, sometimes you open a bag and if it's full of a lot of stuff, I might sift it out with a quarter inch wire. And if it's, or just hand pick it out. And just plant. I mean, Mother Nature drops seeds on the ground. And things grow. She's not sifting. So, yes, maybe a thousand seeds drop and maybe a few only grow. But the point is, she's not sifting, I'm not sifting. So yeah, that's not even fooling Mother Nature. Put the seeds towards the top, put very little on the top as far as soil and water it. So anyways, that's what I was saying. So I'm gonna get more zucchini there. And what else? So don't worry about your tomato plants. And you start your seeds the way you want. I'm gonna go into seeds more very soon because I have a new method. Another new method. I want to clean. Oh, he get cleaned up in here. Look at, he took all the well, not all of it. You can never get rid of that grass, but ugh, that hair algae. Boy, there's a lot of that in there. But anyways, you plant the way you want and experiment because something that works fantastic for me absolutely may not work for you. And that's what I always say. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. I'm just telling you what I do. Now, I may do the craziest things. And you would go, she's crazy. I wouldn't do it that way. And then you try it. <laughs> so... You know, you, I'm trying to spark something, get a light bulb on and go, wow, I think I could do it this way. I don't like the way she does it. I'm going to do it this way. That's what I want you to do. Here I've talked about what I'm going to do here is, and I haven't gotten to it yet, and that's okay. I'm still not 100% what I'm going to do. I'll probably know more when I get down here and make sure those Danes are not coming down the hillside after me. I... I think I'm going to clear all this out. I've talked about it. It's so, it's so hard for me to clear it out because, I mean, it went to seed. This is the, uh, the Swiss chard, the red, red vein Swiss chard. And I know it's going to be gorgeous if I leave it. So I might leave a couple and then I might just chop it all, you know, chop it all back down and let it fall on the bottom. It'll break down into its own soil. And like I said, I'm going to line it with buckets. This is the first bucket I put in here. And these are tomatillos that I did not plant. I hadn't planted anything in here and they all started growing so I'm leaving that and then I'm gonna put these buckets in there and these buckets have some have holes on the bottom and there might be a few that have holes on the side but these have holes on the bottom because the whole idea is I want them to send some of their roots down and I want the earthworms to go back and forth because I'm not dealing with gophers in here if I've got gophers coming up into a truck bed I got bigger problems then they'll have gophers everywhere no there's no gophers in here I had something that created a stairway once for rabbits to get in. They had some babies in the corner, so I couldn't water. That was, I think, two years ago only. So that's what I'm doing in here. And then here I'm not doing anything. You see my apple trees. These are just seedlings. I should shape them and stuff. It's mainly for fun. They were growing. It was either compost them down or plant them, and I stuck them in floral pots. The bottoms have big holes, so the pots eventually will break away. That one's not even in a floral pot. I don't think that one is either. Neither is that little one that got chewed to the ground that's still insisting on making a comeback. And then of course, that's my nectarine tree. So we'll see what happens with that. Who knows, maybe I'll get, become a master in grafting. And then I have to get in here and I still am not sure. I love this. Can you imagine it's been set up over a year? How many of you came in? Actually, it wasn't that many saying, oh, I give it three months, it's gonna crumble to the ground. Mm, nope. Nope, and if one of them did, it would be no big deal, but nope, nope. That chair, though, I think I bought that chair, gee, I, I talked about it. It's 19, it wouldn't be 88, probably 1990, maybe 92 or 93. That's an old, old chair. And I had another one that broke just the seat out of it and I, I think Gary threw that one away and then I felt bad because the structure of it the legs were still good and it could have still sat on there because the back was there it was just the center seat but that's okay that one I never painted it came dark blue it was an umbrella set that's look at all the tomatoes I had it strung up and I think we had some wind and then of course I showed you this on the garden tour I don't know what kind of squash it is but I got some squash that looks yellow cool so I'm going to clean this up and do that. So what else was I going to talk about? That's it. Don't worry. I'm getting right away to how I make my plant food. That's a plant food station. 
I've got a few more lined up down there. This will be really cool when I get this all done. I think I'll put geraniums in the front. They're not going to hurt anything. And I'll show you how I do it. I do it the same way. I'll, I've got videos on how I make compost tea or plant food. And that's the thing is it's not changed. It's still the same way. I'm just making it different to make my life easier. There's different ways of doing things to make things easier. So I'm planning on getting to this real soon. Look at the weather today. They even said it might rain, Gary said. So we'll see if it really does rain. They said that about a week ago and we didn't get any rain. But that's it. I thought I would just say hello. Oh, and about the death of a tote. Let's go look at that. My totes are so old, some of them. My first big video was made with this tote. Look at that, still going strong. A little tote with handles. Is you can do this by every day. You could put in stuff every couple days. It's quite cute. I should actually clean that up and use that for lettuce. So if it gets too hot and sunny, I can lift the lettuce and move it somewhere. Might do that, because I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do with it. Look, there are many ways to break a tote. You can leave an empty tote out in the sun. I've told you that, and then it will dry up and it will break. Basically, they don't break. I've got totes here that are old, but that one broke. I guess I can say how. I was working here, and you've seen me working here because I'm stacking these and getting this ready, and this is doing really good. And I asked Gary, now you drive in and out of here, are my totes in your way? No. I said, are you sure? He goes, a bucket was. He moved a bucket. I guess that was in the way. So I said, all right, I come out here and there it is. I said, what happened to the tote? He said, I think I clipped it, he thinks. He, in other words, he ran over my tote. So anyways, we're one tote down. So do I save the tote? Do I push it up against the wall and try to do, look at this, it's still in good shape. I can always put it, if I put the tote in another tote, here's the problem, and it could be done, but I probably won't do it. You create a wall and a place where the plants won't grow, because that tote, let's say, is bigger, and it would be nice, but you're creating a wall. Now, you'll end up with critters in there, things you don't want. Snails could get in there, slugs could get in there, earwigs could get in there. You could have tons of roly-polies, far more than what you need. So the odds are my tote will be going in the trash. I don't know what else I can do, unless I cut the bottom and just use the bottom as a tray. I might do that after I get the soil out. The reason I didn't move anything is I'm removing some of this soil because it was you know, made from my own plant matter and I want to get it all into these totes here so I can get squash planted right away. That's my goal right now. And then once I'm done with the squash, I want to get maybe the zucchini that I've got started in there. Some is red and some of them are green, just the black beauty zucchini, and get zucchini all along here so I could end up with you know, a lot going on. And maybe I will dig some holes out and throw some leaves and stuff around the totes and see if I can get some spotted next to the totes because that again creates a compost tea. Everything is so rich here. So I might do that and I might do that here, but I asked him if it was in the way. It was out a little bit in his defense. He pulled it in after he ran it over. It's kind of after the fact, but I asked him, is it in your way? And he told me no. So one tote down, I have plenty, I still have plenty. It's just that I, I'm just so excited when they last so long. Some of them, the handles might break because they've been for years and you go and try to pull something and it's like, snap. Well, they still go. I even had one I found in the trash that was broke. <gasps> oh, and I duct taped it and it lasted a couple of years. I just duct taped it all the way around, but it's not worth it. I mean, this is like a Walmart tote. I, do I have a Walmart tote here? Yeah, you know, these, they come in gray and they're five bucks. And sometimes you can get them at, uh, I saw them at once at an Aldi's for $4. And then I have colored totes, but I kind of didn't want to go colored totes here. So actually that was going to go in there. And I still may have enough. No, I'm short one tote. I'm going to have to go around the yard looking where the other tote is. Because I think I was going to put four in each area there. And now we'll figure it out.
I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll just go three. Oh, why do you have one tote still there? Okay, now I'm rambling. All right, well, I'm going to get to work and get some stuff done, and I want to do more on how I make my compost tea and why it's so different. It's not different. It's the same, but it's different. And again, for now, go check out the old videos. I've got them, and they're all the same. And I love making the compost tea. I started feeding that again because a lot of the plants in there looked a little yellow, the cucumbers, and now they're making, boom, they burst it into life again because it gives them that extra boost, and it's just, it's free. It's basically mother nature. It rains, the water sits in puddles, it breaks down everything on the top. By the time it soaks in the ground, you have rich matter as topsoil made by mother nature. Well, I'm making my own compost tea. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.